Hi, we're back again to talk about COVID-19 updates. All the information you'll hear today is current as of May 1st, 2020. I'm Dr. Leslie Phillips, Senior Director of Research Insights and Innovations at SEIU 775 Benefits Group and an epidemiologist. I'm joined today by Dr. Jay Fadi, SEIU 775 Benefits Group Consultant. Thank you for joining us again as we talk about COVID-19 and how to make your own homemade mask and face shield. Dr. Fadi, can you please reintroduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Dr. Jay Fadi, family physician and consultant for the Benefits Group. Great to be here today. Your safety is important and a top priority for all of us at the Benefits Group. We continue working hard to get you resources that you need most. Hopefully you've heard by now that caregivers are in tier one, the state's priority list for access to PPE. This is a huge win, but we know that access to masks might vary on who your employer is, and that may, you may not have received them yet, or you could run out of what you've been given. So today we'd like to show you a couple of videos that will take you through making a mask at home, as well as a face shield. And luckily we have one of our instructors, Myri, to demonstrate this for you. Hi everyone, I'm Myrie and I'm an instructor and I new, normally teach basic training 70 classes. But today I'm gonna walk you through a mask video and talk about how we can modify a mask and make it even better. We will be watching a video from the Surgeon General and we will, we will be pausing in a couple of places to talk about those modifications we can make. Here's how you can make your own face covering in a few easy steps with items you can find around the house, like an old scarf, a bandana or a hand towel, or you can make a face covering out of an old t-shirt. Fold it to the middle from the bottom. Fold it to the middle from the top. Some options for adding a filter. Here are a shop towel or a reusable grocery bag. I have a shop towel right here and just your basic reusable shopping bags. What you need to do is cut one of these items up into a rectangular shape that is just a little bit smaller than your mask and insert it into the middle of the mask. Another thing that you can do, you can use is a piece of nylon and put it over your mask so that it fits better. So we have a picture or photo for you as you can see in this photo, what we're talking about. So researchers have found that an outer layer can improve it, its ability to filter out small particles. So here we have the nylon and you just take it up, cut the foot part out and put it over your head and the mask. Fold it again to the middle from the bottom and again from the top. And then two rubber bands, one on one side and one on the other side. Then you fold either side to the middle and you have yourself cloth face covering. It's that easy. So there are a few options for head attachments that can make the mask fit better and more comfortable. One way to convert ear loops for a head attachment is to use a pipe cleaner around the ear loops and pull it behind your head adjusting to your head size. And I will demonstrate that here. Here is your pipe cleaner. You just put it over your ear loop and around your head. Another way is to add a chain link rubber bands to the ear loops. I have some chain link right here. Colorful. Great. So good luck in making those masks. You guys will do great. Now we're going to watch a video about how to make face shelves. Pandemic or not, a face shield is a great way to get that splatter protection. The design in the video 
does not create a space between your face and the shield. If you want to wear a face mask under it, a gap is ideal to prevent fogging. Most design designs glue a piece of foam along the forehead to create a one inch gap. Instead of foam, you can use a thick sponge or two sponges glued together. You can even use a rolled up washcloth. So a great, some great material for face shields is a vinyl fabric or PVC transparent, transparency. But there are other household items that work for this too. A clear shower curtain can work, a sheet, of, a sheet protector you'd use in a three ring binder. The clear cover to fold to a folder you find in a store would work as well. Anything that provides you enough visibility for you to see while you're at work. And I have an example here. Here is the face shield that I have made to prevent splatter. Along here, we have the foam piece. And also just a regular headband. So as you can see, making a face shield is probably easier than you thought. Now we want to be clear that the only proven option that will reduce your risk of infection when in the presence of COVID-19 or other illnesses is personal protective equipment which is also called PPE. And that includes items like N95 respirators, face shields, gowns and gloves, known to offer protection from infection. We think that the combination of a homemade face mask and face shield may be helpful in protecting you while caregiving. Please go to myseiubenefits.org to read more about how to get PPE if you have a client who is sick. And a reminder, if you yourself are in a high risk group and your client or someone they live with are sick with COVID-19 or something that could be COVID-19, you need to call your own healthcare provider and ask them if you should be seeing your client. And as you probably all know, the CDC now recommends that everyone wear a cloth mask when you are outside your house and around other people and you can't maintain social distancing to decrease the chances of you spreading germs. We all need to be protecting each other. Thank you. Here are a few reminders. First of all, you've heard it before, but you're going to hear it again. If you feel sick, don't go to work. Call your healthcare provider since depending on your symptoms, you may need to get tested for COVID-19. Also, call your client before you visit. Ask if they're sick and also ask if anyone else in their household is sick. If the answer is yes, and you are in one of the high risk vulnerable populations for COVID-19, call your doctor. Ask, should you go to work? If the answer is yes and you are not high risk, you should request PPE. IPs can do this by calling their Area Agency on Aging or DDA contact. And APs can do this by calling their supervisor to request PPE. When you're out in the community, wear a cloth mask when you're around other people and can't maintain six feet of separation. This could be going to the grocery store and it's just really crowded. Sometimes you're in line and you just can't stay far apart from people. And experts are learning that people who have COVID-19 or might be about to get sick with COVID-19 may have no symptoms. And so they could be spreading it. So if you don't want to spread it to other people, wearing a mask is a really great way to protect our community. But what about when caring for a client who doesn't seem sick? A lot of caregiving doesn't allow for social distancing. So you should also cover your face. Feel free to explain to your client why you're doing this, that it's just safer for both of you if neither of you are sick. Covering your face at minimum means a mask, but adding a face shield is another option, especially if you're doing intimate caregiving tasks that might lead to splatter. Examples of this could be feeding your client or brushing your client's teeth. That way your whole face, including your eyes, has some protection. It's a new world now with the pandemic, and we are all need to be thinking in new ways about how to keep ourselves, clients, and our whole community as healthy as possible. Thanks to everyone for your interest in COVID-19 updates. We hope this can help you stay safe as you continue playing a key role in helping others. Please continue visiting our website, myseiubenefits.org, for the most up-to-date information on all things COVID-19 related. Thank you for watching.